it's been really hard. What I'd like to say is like, I found community and like, we like make each other feel safe and da 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 da. And like now we're whole or whatever. <laughs> but I think especially having peers that could like never relate to my relationship to the Aina or that can never understand what it's like to be a black person like in the United States. Those are sort of like visceral experiences that like can't be duplicated. Like unless you were born within those circumstances, you can't understand what it's like to like mm -hmm. constantly be surveilled or constantly be like judged or hated or like, you know, experiencing violence. My name is Nikki Aquino, and I am the director of this documentary. I identify as Chinese, Filipino, and Native Hawaiian. I was born and raised in San Francisco, and I, like Cheyenne, am a rising sophomore at Pitzer College. I actually learned that I am part Native Hawaiian relatively recently. Last year, my family and I tried out Ancestry.com, initially as a joke. When the results came back, I was elated not surprised, to discover that I'm also part Native Hawaiian. My grandfather was born and raised on Oahu and brought his local culture upbringing back to the mainland. My mother was raised with local culture, and so was I. I've also been told that I look Polynesian a countless number of times by my peers. While I took people's perceptions of me with a grain of salt, I did wonder if there was some truth to their comments, especially because so many people acknowledge this. So when I found out I am part Native Hawaiian, my identity just clicked. While doing research for this film, I learned that Native Hawaiians are more likely to be diagnosed with mental illness by DSM standards than any other racial group in America. This is attributed to a sense of cultural loss and consequential tainted self-perception, impacts of colonization. Also, Native Hawaiian males are more likely to commit suicide than females with a ratio of three to one. However, Native Hawaiians and Pacific Islanders are still the most understudied group in terms of mental health. With that in mind, I wanted to explore the topic of mental health among Native Hawaiian college students at my school. Like most private institutions, Pitzer College is predominantly white. While I firmly believe that Pitzer is working hard to make school more accessible to underrepresented communities, the current climate feels heavily dominated by white upper-class individuals. Don't get me wrong, I've been enjoying my time at Pitzer but there's a sense of disappointment that comes with realizing that you're part of the 0.2% of Native Hawaiians and Pacific Islanders at Pitzer, and that when you're in classes or at the dining hall, people can't relate to you on a cultural level. To hear more about her experience so far, I met with Cheyenne. My name is Cheyenne Kamakakalani Paris Bushido. I identify as mixed. I identify as Black, Native Hawaiian, Filipino, and Tlingit. I grew up predominantly in Seattle in the Pacific Northwest. Most of my family does live in islands. I feel like one of my greatest weaknesses is like internalizing that distance as um, being misplaced and um, allowing loneliness to fester within myself. In addition to the dimension of like feeling away from home and like not where I'm supposed to be, like these compound to build a type of like recoiling into myself. My current state's pretty trash, honestly. Um, I think a lot of it has to do with like a sense of survivor's guilt about um, like because there were so many circumstances or so many sacrifices made for my success, for like this Eurocentric definition of success, for a degree and you know all of these things. I, Am I the one that was picked to be estranged from the family and, you know, get a degree and be the successful one? And, like, what is the cost of, like, white academia? And, like, is my being here even worth it? Like, mm -hmm. is there, like, even if I do graduate with, like, you know, all these great honors, like, what does that do for, like, all the rest of the black girls that are, like, that go missing, you know, mm -hmm. or that are murdered every day? Like, sometimes I just feel like there's like a sense of like hopelessness. I'm, I'm finding like more and more that like blackness is just like universally hated. And like, 
I'm just crying. <laughs> Even in like indigenous spaces, like there will be rampant anti-blackness, and like that's like just a part of like the means and tools that like the settler state has used to like colonize our like communities and like separate us and like I acknowledge that but like it's really hard to not feel alone here since I've come to college I feel like my mental health has gotten worse I think that a component of this is attributed to my struggle in decolonizing my ethnic identity. I realized that my perception of my ethnicity growing up was tremendously whitewashed and accommodating to white people, a consequence of going to private white institutions. I am trying to create space for myself to unapologetically embrace my identity in an authentic way, but when I do so, I feel like a white person imitating culture. I want to reclaim my identity, but I don't know how to do it in a way that feels real. Today, Hawaii is recognized worldwide as one of the hottest destinations for those who seek adventure or an escape from their everyday life. From the island's gorgeous beaches to the hospitable locals, no wonder travelers flock to Hawaii to get a taste of the islands. However, Hawaii's past and current relationship with the United States is anything from beautiful. This is the story of Hawaii that the travel guides and brochures don't tell. At the end of the Spanish-American War in 1898, the United States acquired the nation-states of Hawaii and Guam from Spain. After the annexation of Hawaii, in which the United States overthrew Queen Liliuokalani from power, the island nation remained a territory under American sovereignty. Throughout the first half of the 20th century, white immigrants established sugar plantations and the American military set up base on the islands. In addition to taking the islands' land and resources, the American government also pushed colonial efforts by banning the traditional Hawaiian language. Even though Hawaii was officially included as the 50th state in the United States, the effects of American colonialism continue to impact the islands and the natives who now reside on the islands and on the mainland. There's a certain recklessness about being alive and having made it to 18. Like, I'm the first woman in my family, on my mom's side of the family, to graduate high school without a baby. Again, I went to rich, private, white high school. Um, the conversations around mental health that were happening were very superficial. It was just very surface level, like, let's only cater to, like, white females, you know, mental health services. And, like, at the same time, Black and Indigenous folks that were on campus were still being labeled as, like, angry or, you know, like, unreasonable without being even offered or considered for a lot of um, those same <laughs> resources. So, like, I know I'm, I know I'm not, I'm not healthy. I know I'm, like, addicted and depressed these things and nothing no one's helping me <laughs> like so I don't, I don't feel bad about being self-destructive or reckless at all the greatest strength that I have is like history like the fact that like there have been generations of people that have been through circumstances similar to mine if not worse the history of like the ancestral like power behind that and like um, all of all of those efforts I feel like is a strength that I have within me like that I can't deny for me a lot of decolonizing and relearning like my cultural heritage has been like in the recent past like um, as an adult. I feel like tattooing for me has been something that feels like it, it just makes so much sense like for me as a person. The fact that it fits in with my cultural heritage. There's just this whole like, you know, heritage that I have to look up to as far as tattooing and it doesn't feel, there, it doesn't feel like there's any pressure um, in there, the ways that it does in like other things, like in affinity spaces or whatever finding those intimate spaces 
um, to just exist and not feel pressure to like exist in any way or by any conditions. In my life, what I want to do is be like a healer and to understand myself and like my community enough to be able to provide, you know, those kind of services. I too want to be a healer, but for me, I want it to be in the form of education. I hope to decolonize public and private school curriculums in an effort to tell different versions of history. While creating this documentary, I learned that there is a sense of empowerment in taking control of your own history and telling your stories. While the future of the status of Native Hawaiians is relatively unknown, telling our stories and having our voices heard is one way to bring more awareness to the mainstream, as well as Asian Pacific Islander communities.